Hello and welcome to another episode of Katie the Science Lady. I'm Mrs. Jacobson and today's topic is viral structure. So let's learn together. Okay, today's topic is one that has been in the news lately, something that you've heard of, something that's keeping you at home um, instead of in school or at work. We are talking about viruses, and in particular, together, we're going to be talking about viral structure today, what viruses are made of. So a virus, first thing, it is not a living thing. We talked about this during our levels of organization video, but viruses are not alive. They are not made of cells. Um, they are tiny, non-living particles. They can't reproduce on their own. They need a host cell. That's why you get sick. They need you in order to reproduce. Uh, they do not grow, so you don't have a baby virus and a teenage virus and an adult virus. They are one size fits all. They don't develop, so they don't change. Once a virus is formed, it's not going to go through changes. Um, mutations are something completely different, and we'll talk about that in future videos. But when I talk about developing, I'm not talking about mutations. Uh, but once a virus is formed, it's not going to rearrange itself into something different. It is not a transformer. And they don't use energy. Viruses don't eat, they don't use sunlight, they don't use chemicals for energy. They don't need it, they don't use it. Our example down here is something called a bacteriophage. That is a virus that infects, you guessed it, bacteria. So that is its job. It looks a little bit different. Um, I think it looks kind of like a weird spider or a spacecraft of some kind. Um, they are my favorite kind of virus. They're pretty cool and they also don't infect me, so I like that. We have parts of a virus that we're gonna go over here briefly. There are four that we're gonna talk about today. The first is the protein shell called a capsid, and that is this yellow region you see here. It looks kind of like a cell membrane, but it, this is not a cell. So instead, it's just a protein coating that's there to protect what's on the inside, which is also similar to our cells. It's DNA or RNA. So viruses do have genetic material, which is why a lot of people tend to think that they're just like our cells, but they're not. They don't act in the same way. They just have some structures that might look similar. In addition, they have an envelope, this green part on the outside here, made of stolen cell membrane. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit because viruses are really tricky and they steal literally your cells, cell membranes during the process of their replication. So we'll talk about how they get that envelope and why they need it. And then the last part are these glycoproteins or projections on the outside of the viral um, structure. And their job is to literally fit like a lock and a key to the glycoprotein receptors on your cells. So if this here is my cell, and it's got a receptor shaped like this, and this is my virus here, it can float in, connect, and then the cell will actually pull the virus into the cell. It's a little bit crazy. Because the virus matches the glycoproteins on specific cells, it gets let in. And again, that capsid is the yellow part. The genetic material is either RNA, ribonucleic acid, or DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, and is found in that center region of the virus. The envelope made of the stolen cell membrane is on the outside, and the glycoproteins, they're projections, and they may look different depending on the type of virus, but they're always on the outside of the virus because they have to be able to be in contact with the cell that it's trying to invade. Here are several different forms a virus can take. We have our trusty bacteriophage over here. And this picture alone is why I say it looks kind of like a spacecraft of some kind. It looks like they've got little crew, mod crew module here. It's got like landing gear. Um, it looks like somebody's ready to step out of that on the surface of the moon or something. Down over here, the second one, we have um, what an influenza virus looks like. Now you've heard of the influenza virus, it's the flu, um, but it's a family of viruses. So this may not even be a flu virus. It could just be from that family. COVID-19 is thought to be um, in that kind of same family of viruses, which is why you see similar structures. If you've ever seen a picture of what they think COVID-19 looks like, it looks very similar to this influenza virus. We also have adenoviruses um, where we've got that protein outer coat here. You've got DNA in the middle 
and you've got those spindly glycoproteins on the outside. It's a little more um, geometric. It's not quite as spherical. And then we have over here um, a mosaic virus. It's got a helix, which means it's a twisted spiral. And in the middle of it is the RNA. And you can see that up here, it's hard to tell, but it's got RNA like this, and it's almost like a cord wrapped around itself, like old fashioned telephones, which none of you were alive <laughs> to see probably, uh, but they have those spring springy cords um, that people would use. And this mosaic virus down here, it infects tobacco, and that's usually in the name. Sometimes you'll see the host cell in the name of the virus because they're so closely linked. Here's another quick look at bacteriophage structure. We've got the head of the bacteriophage up here containing the DNA or RNA. All around it to protect that DNA or RNA is a protein coat. So the majority of a virus, and in this case the bacteriophage, is protein. There is no organelles in there. You can't see ribosomes. You don't see mitochondria or chloroplasts. There's no membrane organelles. It's just DNA and protein in this case. And now there aren't true glycoproteins here, but they do have these spindly legs, which do attach to the host cell. So they act in a similar way, even though they don't have to like, have that lock and key kind of mechanism to them. Now, when we talk about viral replication, they are essentially tricking your cells. Viruses are kind of like masters of disguise and they use this camouflage to help get into our cells. The first thing a virus does is it finds and attaches to a specific kind of cell by matching up those glycoproteins. If the glycoproteins don't match, let's say here's my cell and here's my glycoprotein, if they don't match, that cell isn't gonna grab it and bring it in, that cell will just bounce right off. So it has to connect the glycoproteins to your cell in order to be welcomed inside. Once that happens, the DNA or RNA from that virus gets brought into the cell, essentially gets turned into a virus factory. The DNA or RNA from the virus gets copied and copied and copied, and then it gets folded back up and made into new viruses by your cells. So your cells are being made to make viruses at that point. Once you have enough of the new viruses, they will start bursting out of your cell. I like to say exploding because I'm a little dramatic, but if you poke a hole in a balloon enough times, it's going to pop. And that's what happens to your cells. The viruses explode from your cell, sometimes hundreds or thousands at a time, and that's going to kill your cell. And this up here is the reason we have the envelope on the outside of the virus. We have a brand new virus here, just freshly made by your cell. As it's trying to leave, it's going to come into contact with your cell membrane. On your cell membrane are your own glycoproteins. So it's going to take that cell membrane and glycoproteins and use it as its little shield almost. It's like it's cellular camouflage. It gets coated in that so that the next time it comes across one of your cells that it can infect, it will. Because those glycoproteins will match and then it'll look like one of your cells because it has your cell membrane on it. So it's kind of using your cell membrane as like a hoodie. You kind of match in it, it hides in there, and then it gets welcomed right into your cell as well. Now viruses are incredibly specific. We did talk about this briefly. They're only going to infect certain cells. This is kind of the reason why you don't get a cold and your eyes don't turn red and you don't have eye problems when you get a cold the cold virus infects your respiratory cells. When you breathe it in or you, you sniff something or somebody sneezes in your face, gross, you get those uh, cold viruses in your respiratory tract, your nose, your mouth, your throat. And because the glycoproteins there match, you're going to get those cells infected, which is why you get a cough or you get a runny nose or you get a scratchy throat because those cells are the ones that are dying when the viruses break out. Here is a quick look, a quick recap, if you will. Our virus attaches to a cell. It's going to inject the DNA or RNA inside. That DNA or RNA is replicated. Your cells end up being a little factory and they're gonna produce a lot of viruses. And then those brand new viruses are going to burst out of your cell, killing it. You'll notice it's a cycle. So those new viruses, now that there are hundreds or thousands or even millions of them, they're going to go and infect other cells.
So to recap, viruses are non-living infectious particles and have a couple of basic structures. They're, firstly, they have genetic material. It's usually either DNA or RNA, and that's kept in the center of the virus. They have a protein coating called a capsid for protection. They don't want that DNA or RNA to get damaged in some way. They also have an envelope, which is made of a host cell's cell membrane, so that when a virus infects your cell and bursts out of your cell killing it, it takes part of your cell membrane so that it can essentially hide in your body and your body will accept it into its cells again. And the last part is that pretty much all types of viruses have some sort of attachment, um, which allows them to attach to host cells, and we call those glycoproteins. Glycoproteins are what makes viruses so specific. For example, the flu virus will attach to specific cells in your throat and your respiratory tract because its glycoproteins are specifically formed to attach to those types of cells. Well, I hope you had fun today. Um, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more biology videos. And again, I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something and I'll see you later.